Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. How's your week, Bridget? Good and busy and I feel fun. Like I haven't seen you in a million years. It does feel like that. Isn't that weird? Yeah. We are having a delightfully rainy morning here in LA. It's funny because I think of Girls Next Door, I think of it as this show that everybody watched because it was like this serotonin boost of sunshine and LA and bikinis and jumping on trampolines. And this podcast is like, it's a very rainy day. <laughs> and we're sitting here with our tea. It's called growth, people. Well, it's also because it's been a really weird year in Los Angeles. Like... I know. I mean, thank God we need the rain, but it's it's a little different. I'm also suffering from a purple shampoo disaster. So if you're watching this on the Patreon, you can see a little bit of it. But my hair was so brassy. Okay, purple shampoo never works for me and I never learned my lesson. But my hair was so brassy yesterday. I just felt like such a millennial chug, even though I am like a exennial elder millennial. So I'm not begging on millennials, but it was a very like, you know, you just feel like, ugh. <laughs> Why do I look like such a mom? I totally am a mom, but you know what I mean. You know how it is. So now I'm sitting here with hair that looks like I dyed it purple two months ago and it's just now washing out. I came in, I was like, your hair looks like it's a different color <laughs> <Yeah>. today. <laughs> How's your week been, though? Uh, just really busy and my mom is in town, so fun stuff. Well, I'm excited for the Queen Mary tomorrow. Me too. I can't wait. By the time this is out, if you guys are on our Patreon, you've already heard a Slumber Party episode from the Queen Mary. But we are also going to record with Stacy Burke and Bridget's mom because they probably have a lot to say about this episode we're about to get back into. Not only about this episode, but I'm also asking my mom about uh, just her feelings in general about my whole wanting to be in Playboy yeah. and moving to the mansion and all those different times. Anastasia coming to the mansion. Like, oh yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, how how she felt about it, how my family felt about it, and how like the how she felt like the town took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call that episode Hometown Haters. I decided. <laughs> so we are getting back into season one, episode eleven of Girls Next Door, Grape Expectations, where we left off. We had just done a fun round of grape stomping. We just gotten into like a bootleg wet t-shirt contest. Oh my god. And then I think the next scene we're cutting to is this funny scene back at the mansion, right? Uh oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it cuts back to the mansion and all you hear are like sex noises and you see the outside of the guest house. Yeah. Ah. Like, uh, ooh. <laughs> like shit like that. You know what? The first time I saw it, I was like, wait, what is happening? I know. I didn't get it at first either. The first time we saw a rough cut, but it's actually sound effects from the Playboy pinball machine. Yeah. And but it, <laughs> it gets me. It gets me like every time. Even this time when I watched it, like I knew, but I was still like, wait. Oh my God. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. And then ew, sort of too. <laughs> yeah, you forget. It's so blatant. And it all has to do with this gag, which I was always very supportive at the time. And I think I even kind of thought of it, that anytime we're away on Girls Next Door, what is Hef up to? You know, because we're gone for a few hours, so he must have blue balls already. <laughs> you know, which is so stupid. But I mean, it goes with his character. And I think it's like a fun play on that. And... You know, we'll get to it later, but when we're in the limo coming back, I start talking about, like, I wonder what Hef's up to. And this is kind of like a pre-shadow of this. You know what? I feel like there's two things with it. I feel like it's a running gag with you for the show, but I also feel like there's a level of sincerity to it just because of past and how if you do walk away even for one minute at a party or something like that, there's like a million girls that are like honing in. Oh yeah, it's a true thing. So it's not just a gag for the show. Like I get how you play into it mm -hmm. for the show, but it's more than that. Like it really was something that I felt like we did have to kind of be worried about, especially you. That's true. I mean, realistically at this time while we were shooting the show, I didn't really feel threatened by it because yeah. I think I sensed that because you know, the show was happening and Hef valued the show that we were like a solid group and he wasn't going to like add anybody or like sleep with anybody behind my back. But for like the four years leading up to it, mm -hmm. I was not that secure. Yeah. And I think the fact that I'm willing to kind of like bring it up and talk about it on camera shows that I'm not insecure about it because I think things that I felt vulnerable or insecure about, I did not want to share on camera back then. 
But yeah, it's interesting. And it's not that I felt secure in my life at this time. There were still a million things I felt insecure about, but that was one thing that I kind of felt like, okay, we're at a point in our relationship four years later where I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, it was like a weird situation though because it was like, I felt very secure too. I didn't feel like anybody was trying to replace me. I felt like Mm -hmm. everybody was very happy with the situation, the three of us with Heath. Not that people aren't trying to take your spot because certainly I'm sure there were a ton of people who would have loved to, but that they weren't actually going to or that Heath wasn't going to let them. Yeah, yeah, that. But then also though, one complaint out of us and you're replaceable. Totally. So you were kind of walking this line where you felt secure, but then you were constantly told you might not be so secure yeah, at the same exactly. time. Or step one thing out of line and I'll replace you. That is the truth. So it was like kind of a weird, like, I don't know. It's like you had both feelings going on at the same time, Mm -hmm. if that's even possible. It is, but I don't know if people understand how it's possible to have it both ways at the same time. I did have fun playing with that gag, though. Like, even the one example I can think of for sure is when we did the Jamaica episode in season four. Like, I said to the producers, I'm like, you should have footage of Hef, like, watching movies with other girls, and then we're acting, like, jealous about it. Like, I thought that kind of shit was funny. yeah. It is funny to an extent. Yeah. But there there was a dark history to it, I think. Exactly. Just how we were made to feel for so many years. Exactly. And then uh, can we just talk about how seriously Hef takes pinball? Oh, yeah. He's very serious about all kinds of games. Like somebody was talking about Monopoly the other day, and I was very smugly thinking about how I could wipe anyone's asshole with Monopoly just because I learned all the good tricks from him, always by orange. <laughs> Yeah, like he is a game expert on any kind of game. And people used to say that when Pac-Man first came out, like him and his friends would have like the Pac-Man arcade games in the game house. And just like his girlfriend, I think it was Shannon Tweed at the time, would always call herself a Pac-Man widow because Hef was like always obsessed with Pac-Man and that's all him and his friends would do was Pac-Man. Do you remember when we used to play Uno too, how serious he was about all the rules and like not like getting too giddy or like silly during it and stuff and yeah I got my head bit off for it (laughs) yeah and then do you remember we played Clue and I was Miss Scarlet Mm -hmm. and I said oh I think I did it in the ballroom with the candlestick he's like what do you mean you did it and he got all mad at me I don't remember that but I believe it he's like it's not you it's Miss Scarlet I'm like yeah but I'm Miss Scarlet I'm playing Miss Scarlet well it's not you and I mean it just oh I was no. like, whoa, whoa. I, and it's still something I do today, and I snicker in the back of my mind. I did it in the ballroom yeah. with the candlestick. And well, that's how I think of Clue as well. Like, I really identify with whoever I pick to be. Yeah, yeah. Who so, doesn't? That's so weird. I, you're not allowed to do it when you play with him. That is weird. And Uno was really strict. I remember Domino's was really strict. And I remember he would, like, just get on this roll, too, like, he wanted to play all the time. He gets super addicted to the game. Yeah, and it would get to the point where I would start to feel like my mind was being numb. Like, at first, like, the Mexican train um, domino game, which, by the way, you guys, I have no idea where the origin of that name comes from. So if it's offensive, let me know. That's just what yeah, the I always. Called. I have no idea. I, I, always, I go, that could be really bad. Like, yeah. maybe it's not. Maybe it has, like, a completely innocuous meaning but I'm like that sounds like it could be really bad but anyway we play this game which I have no idea what else to call it other than it was called Mexican Train and I loved it at first but it was just such a simple game it got so mind-numbing tired and yeah, I just wanted to stick with it. Yeah, we'd get really bored with it. I love playing games, but we would just get really bored with it. I know Kendra would be like, ugh. Yeah. She would like schlep down and like mm-hmm. hated it. We all did, but she especially. Yeah. <laughs> especially did. And it sucks too, because I love I love game nights and stuff. And especially when all you have to do is push a button and the butlers come running out and bring food and stuff. Yeah, it just would have been better if we could have switched up the games a little bit. Oh my god, do you remember how nasty the dominoes would get because they would bring out food? I don't, but I probably blocked that from my mind because that kind of stuff drives me nuts. Like even now as I'm setting up the computer to record this podcast, I was like, ew, I need to break out my alcohol wipes. My computer's disgusting. Yeah, mine is too. But <laughs> but 
specifically Kendra would come down and eat dinner and eat like chicken strips and stuff and then she'd like grab the things and they would be all like they'd have like a little thing of barbecue sauce on them or ranch or something they would be all greasy and I remember all the time you would dump them all out and give them all a bath and probably like I completely have blocked that from my mind but that's something I would do a hundred percent you're like some like, grubby like, hands it's, it's just like a sensory issue that like drives me up a wall all right but I digress. Back to, uh, or we digress. Back to Lodi? Yeah, how's your grandma these days, like in real life? Oh, I think I've mentioned it before on here, but she is doing great. Your grandma's she's so cute. 104. Aww. And she's doing good. She has no health problems. Her mind, she kind of lives in an alternate state. Like, she has her own thing going on. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> relatable but but other than that she's doing good Aw, that's and so cute i've told you about the spooky ghost stories with her before right like in the middle of the night yes yeah. knocking noises and her getting up saying my grandpa who's been dead for like 16 years now is at the door oh that's so cool yeah uh, we can talk more about that another time but yeah there's it. all kinds of creepy stuff going on and she talks to all these people in her sleep and when she wakes up we ask her who are you talking to because you she's crazy in her sleep mm -hmm. and she's like oh and she names off these people that are all dead <gasps> She's a medium. I mean, when you're 104, of course, most of the people you know are dead. So maybe that's who you're <laughs> dreaming about. But still, we're like, oh, uh, and and oh, it was her when it was her birthday the other day that she asked, oh, and I can't remember whose name she said, but let's just say Ethel or oh. something. She goes, is Ethel coming? And my mom goes, uh. <laughs> Who? And she's like, <laughs> Ethel. Is Ethel coming? Ethel's one of her sisters who's been dead for like forever. And my mom's like, uh, no, she couldn't make it. <laughs> and my grandma's like, oh, is she sick? Is she not feeling well? My mom's like, yeah, something like that. She's not feeling well. Oh, poor Ethel. <laughs> Which reminds me too of another funny story. My mom picked her up. This was this was uh -huh. a long time ago before she was living with my mom. And my mom said, how was your Easter? And she said, Esther? And my mom said, no, Easter. How was your Easter? And she said, oh, Esther's been dead for a long time now. Oh, my God. That is funny. And my mom's like, okay, we'll just go with it. <laughs> Rolling with it. Yeah. But anyway, we head to my grandma's house, which was a very important place for me growing up. Like, we would spend every Sunday there. We would all go to church, Sunday school, whatever. We'd all walk. My grandma's house was just down the street. We'd all walk down there afterwards. We'd have a big old lunch. Either my grandma would be making tons of food or we'd get, like, huge buckets of KFC or, yeah. like, just whatever. <laughs> yeah. And um, we'd all just spend all afternoon hanging out. And I had 12 cousins that were all close in age. And we would run around the place and run down the street to the park. And and every single holiday was my grandma's house. Every Easter egg hunt, every Christmas, every Christmas Eve. Like, all of that stuff was always at my grandma's house. It's like Kris Jenner with 10 grandkids. <laughs> yeah, it's a big family and a lot of people. And we were all really, really close. And, um, like, I think of my cousins as sort of, like, distant sister sort of like not quite yeah. as close as my sister but not as distant as a cousin yeah you think you know like we're very very close I know that I could call them for anything right now so my grandma's house was definitely kind of the center of my whole growing up and um I know that I was telling you about I was worried about seeing this creepy doll when yeah. we get there and I wanted to show you guys this this doll. Before we get to the doll, did you yeah. feel like Kendra and I were yelling when we introduced ourselves to your grandma? It could be, but she's hard of hearing <laughs> oh, okay. and has so been maybe for a long a time. Maybe we were so. wrong or something. Because I was watching and I'm like, damn, what is wrong with us? Do we think we're talking to Hef or something? <laughs> Or maybe just used to talking to older people that way. And there's a boom in the shot. You can see it oh, in the yeah, mirror. Oh, yeah, in the mirror. Do you think it's funny, too, when we pull up, there's already a crowd of people outside my, my grandma's house? Yes. Right? <laughs> and you know it's not a very big house. So to fit all those people in there all the time. Yeah. Like, immediate family alone is over 40 people. Mm -hmm. And it's just a tiny little house. Yeah. We, we made it a, work. That's a lot. So when we're talking about the boom in the shot in commentary, I was reminded that we used to call the booms fluffers because they are so fluffy. Yeah. And then that makes me think about how, like, are fluffers a real thing or is it like a porn 
oh, urban like a, legend. Oh, yeah. I don't you know. you know how back in the day, and I feel like this was something people used to say back in the day. I don't hear people talk about it now. But back in the day, people would be like, you know what a fluffer is? That's somebody on a porn set that, like, keeps the male actor hard in between scenes. Yeah. But over the years, like, I, you know, I consume so much content, like, podcasts, like, porn actors are going on there and talking about what it's like working on a porn set. And I never hear anybody mention a fluffer. <laughs> I don't think it's a real thing. And, like, I'm not in possession of a penis or anything, but I wonder, is it easier if you're just constantly hard all day? Or is it easier to blow a load and then get hard again? Like, would really having a fluffer be... Or not even blow a load, but just, like, go limp and then get hard again. Would having a fluffer keep you hard all the time really be the best scenario? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know how it works. These are questions we need answers to. <laughs> Go to our Instagram, weigh in in the comments, Inquiry let us know if fluffers are real, how a dick works, because apparently I'm still learning. I love how we're talking about fluffers when we're talking about going to my grandma's house. <laughs> I know, that's just where my mind goes. So back to your haunted doll, which by the way, I feel like your grandma looks like she could be related to the doll. Ooh, scary. Why do I think that? Do they both kind of have gingery hair? Well, she colored her hair at that time. Okay. Now she's pure white. Like, not even gray. She went pure white, which is cool. Uh-huh. Like, because if I'm going to go gray later, I hope it's pure white. When my hair is suddenly Khaleesi Platinum, you know I'm getting grays. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's okay. how you guys will know that okay. I'm going gray sometime in the future. <laughs> you won't be seeing these roots anymore. Um... Yes, I don't, uh, yeah, maybe just the hair color at that time. I've never thought about that before. Do you want to know the origin of that doll, though, and what also makes it spooky? Yes. Okay, so my great-grandpa on my dad's side of the family, so this grandma that you guys are all meeting is on my mom's side of the family, but my great-grandpa on my dad's side of the family passed away when mm -hmm. I was around 12. He's also the one that... Oh, is he the one that, like, haunted you from the start? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so after he died, and this was before any haunting started or anything like that, by the way, I have a vision of what he looks like in my head because you've told me this story so many times. Ooh. I want to tell you because it's scary. He has piercing blue eyes that you can see from like a mile away. And I don't know how to describe his face other than it's an old man face, but like I have a distinct vision of what I think this looks like. <laughs> That's so interesting because in my haunting, he did have blue eyes. That's the indication that did I knew it tell, wasn't him. Oh, did you tell me that before maybe? Probably. Ooh, because okay. in real life, he had brown eyes. Oh, but in my, when I felt like I was being haunted by him, which I don't even think it was him, you guys, so don't think it was my grandpa's Demon. evil. Yeah, it was something with blue eyes. And Ew. that's, and I didn't even realize that at first until later I made that connection. I was like, it was never him. It was I never him. Chills. But, um, but this doll, okay, so he, um, he died and his, his wife, which was not my great grandmother, it was a, you know, after, uh, well, I guess she was still my great grandmother, but by marriage mm -hmm. now, uh, had died before him. So everything in his house, they were doing like a, a, a sale, you know, of everything. And when I went there, they said, Oh, Bridget, he, for some reason he had a lot of dolls. I don't know if it was his ex that collected them or something, but they were like, Bridget, pick out some, some, whatever you want, like dolls or whatever. And so I grabbed a couple of dolls and one was this beautiful doll that was dressed like a bride. And the other one was that doll. Oh, and so that's um, not even your grandma's doll. No. Oh, okay. So I had it at home for a while and the arm broke. Mm -hmm. And my grandma, and it's one of those plastic arms that's supposed to like be able to like kind of twist and pop back in, but the plastic broke on it. My grandma, for whatever reason at that time, used to love to pick up dolls at um, like yard sales and stuff. And when they were broken like that, she would fix them. And she was really good at fixing these dolls. Mm -hmm. So I took it over to her house to be fixed. And she did her fix it on it with like, I don't know, duct tape or whatever. And it didn't work. And it just sort of stayed at her house like it was like the the doll hospital. The American Girl doll hospital. Yeah, <laughs> it never really got fixed because yeah. the plastic was actually broken. There was mm. really nothing she could have done yeah. to fix it, you know. But that's why it kind of stayed at her house. But then what happened was it would sit up in that guest bedroom. And like I said, we would do all these different events at the house. And we would always run up to that guest bedroom, all of us girl mm -hmm. cousins. And we would tell stories on the bed and play games and like mm -hmm. do all this stuff. And we used to swear that that doll's eyes moved and would look at us. Ew. And then uh, we also felt like that upstairs, and I know I've talked about this before, that that upstairs bedroom was haunted or the house was haunted because we would look at the door and we wouldn't shut it tight. We would mm -hmm. shut it like so it was still 
open like an inch mm-hmm. or two. And then we'd be like, if there's somebody here with us, make the door open. Kid you not, it would slowly open a little bit. Ew. And then we'd be like, make it close. And I have a ton of cousins that can attest to this. Yeah. Now, whether this was just coincidence, and it was more than one time, though, by the way. Yeah. Or what. But we swore that doll was haunted. We swore the door moved. My grandma even has ghost stories from that house. Even my mom admits that today, she didn't do it then, but admits to this day that she's never felt good in that house. Like, there's always been, like, a weird vibe. She never felt like a place she wanted to spend the night or anything like weird. that. Weird. So everybody gets a vibe from that. And then... The doll would actually move, but I think this was my uncle playing tricks on us because he knew how scared we uh-huh. were of the doll. But we would fi- we would come up and find it in different places. Sometimes. Oh man! <laughs> One time it was on the toilet. That was the big oh, giveaway. Oh, that's totally a prank. Yeah, that's that, hilarious. That was the biggest giveaway I that love it was that. them doing it. But we we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. But but even though I still feel like, even though they were joking around with it a little bit, I still feel like it definitely was something up with that doll. That is so funny. You know, I was watching this and I thought she looks like Peggy the doll. For those of you watching on Patreon, I wore my Peggy the doll shirt. Today. What? <laughs> That's oh my God, you did. Yeah. So my boyfriend has a haunted museum in Vegas and one of his favorite things in there is this haunted doll called Peggy. And she looks like, I don't know what year she actually is from, but she looks like a doll from like the 60s or something. And she looks very similar to this doll. I did like a side by side and it's not the same exact face mold. But for a minute I was like, what if it's the same face mold? Did you just hear my alarm go off? Yes. Fuck, it did that to me earlier today. And I'm so freaked out. What does it mean? That a door opened and a door did not open. That's crazy. I know. I I'm, I'm having the alarm people come again just to like possibly debunk. But my alarm's been acting up. And it's just so weird that we're talking about Haunted Doll and, like, Peggy the Doll, and it's like, beep, beep. That's cool. Ew, I have the chills. That is so cool. One of my favorite Halloween costumes was a couple years ago I dressed up as Peggy the Doll. <laughs> oh, you did? I did. And one thing I love about it is she's this doll, and I don't know what her original hair looked like, but it kind of looks like a kid, like, took scissors to this doll's hair. So it's, like, this really short, like, blonde cut. So I got, like, this Karen, can I speak to a manager type wig, and it was just really fun to go around in that wig. <laughs> Um, when I went and saw, when I went to Zach's museum and I went and saw the doll, I didn't think she looked scary or anything at all. Well, she's not supposed to look scary. Yeah, but I did get some feedback from her. Ooh, we need to talk about that more on the slumber party because I have more I'd say about Peggy too. But sometimes I feel like if I go too into paranormal stuff on this podcast, I might lose people. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, we'll we'll skip it. We could talk about it. We'll on save it for party. the Patreon. Yeah. Okay, so we go up to the guest bedroom and they're playing all this spooky tension music, and we find the doll, and she wasn't nearly as big or, or scary as looking. scary as threatening as I remember her being. And you were like, oh, that was kind of disappointing. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's not nearly as big or as threatening as I remember. I remember her just being so big, I guess because I was smaller. Yeah, it's funny how you remember everything. I think that's kind of a common thing when you're a kid and you think back, you remember things being so huge. Yeah, but they do make her eyes move in the edit, which, which I think I is funny. I love that. I love that cartoony <laughs> shit. And did you notice that while we're shooting this um, scene, there's like a super creepy picture of one of my uncles and it looks like it's looking right over your shoulder. Ew, and he's like, no. <laughs> I'll have to look for that next time. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> And then we go back downstairs and my uncle asks if I told you guys about the Christmas parties. And I talk about the amount of people we have in the room. and But that wasn't the story that he wanted me to tell you guys. And oh, I don't it? know if they just edited it out and I told you. Because I know by listening to his voice what story he really wanted me to tell. But I used to produce for the holidays these shows with all my cousins. Uh-huh. And I would make us like get down into our slips. I know that that sounds really bad right now. But I thought we looked like angels yeah. when we were in our slips. And we'd get like the little... Um, Christmas tinsel stuff yeah. and make halos and stuff and we've seen Christmas carols and we do little acts and stuff and mm-hmm. I would put together all these like I was like the show producer for like all my cousins <laughs> and all the holidays and and they have lots of um, video footage of all oh, that that's cute. so I know that that's what he was talking about and then we take photos with my grandma and she's so short you guys we have to like we're like hungering yeah. down to take a picture so with cute. her she's like not even five feet tall she's like four foot eleven or oh something crazy like that do you have a new engagement ring? Yes. Well, that's exciting news. Why are we not talking about that? 
It's so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> I can tell you more about it after the show. Oh, is it private? No. Okay. It's Scandal. not private, but there's a story. Who are you engaged to now? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, okay. Next stop is the Stogie Cigar Bar. Yeah. And then we still have a crowd. Like, I think I say something in the show about Bridget's following followed us everywhere. And you mentioned there were people outside the house. So who are these people? Well, <laughs> outside the house was definitely family. Yeah. And some of the people that followed us around were, like, kind of core family, too. Uh But I think at Stogie's, other than, like, my mom and stepdad and sister and stuff, I think at Stogie's, it was just, like, Stogie's told people we were coming because I didn't know those people, any of those people in there, Uh except for, you know, like I said, the core family stuff. So each place was kind of, like, different crowds, but Mm -hmm. some of them were the same. It just sort of depended. Anastasia is, like, extra cute in the scene. Oh, she's so excited. She's, she's like so giddy. Cute. And it's Aww. so genuine and real. Like, it makes me feel so, like, I just want to hug her. That's so cute. <laughs> and in the commentary, we say that we smoked a hookah and they didn't show that. And they didn't show us blowing smoke rings either. Yeah. Which I'm surprised because that would have been cute, like, just cutaway, like, B roll moments. You I know think what I so mean? too. It's weird. Yeah, instead they show us signing autographs and taking photos with people. To show how famous we are. Right, and then they have me talking about that, and I say, well, I don't really feel like a celebrity, I just feel like I'm a girl from Lodi, but it's really weird, like, taking photos with everybody and signing autographs and stuff. And, of course, according to the show, we're famous because we were in Playboy, not because we're on a reality show. Right, (laughs) which is not not what really not true. <laughs> but they do show us smoking cigars and they're teaching us how to do it properly because if you don't know, the trick to smoking a cigar is you don't inhale. Yeah, which is the opposite of cigarette smoking. Or pot smoking. Yeah. And then you swirl the smoke in your mouth and then blow it out. Mm. Um, yeah, I would have loved to see us blowing O's because I think we, we were like practicing yeah. and then we got it. Yeah. And I don't know if I could ever do that again. So I would have loved to see the footage of me actually doing it. Did you ever feel like there were times, and I don't know if this is the case, maybe they just didn't want to include it for some reason. Did you ever feel like there were times we were doing things that in the moment you know would make good TV? And by good TV, I don't mean it was necessarily this like groundbreaking plot no. moment, but just like a cute B-roll or like something that should have been included. Yeah. And the cameras just weren't on it as they should have been? Yes. Oh, I mean, there were so many moments, and I don't have them all, like, documented in my head now, but I remember a million times thinking, they're missing this. Exactly. Yeah, I know, but it's just, like, how many, they were very cheap on how many cameras they wanted to send, and I don't know how many camera crews we had in Lodi, Mm -hmm. maybe two, but it might have just been one. Probably. And I and we were just so discouraged from having any say in anything. I don't think we were ever encouraged to, like, really be talking to the crew or the field producers as it was going. Well, I know Stogies was so happy that we stopped by and they say like, we do a really quick goodbye to my family. We get in the limo and we start to head home. But I just want to like, if I could put in a sound effect right here, like scratch the record. Yeah. Because I know we mentioned this at the top of the show too, but there's so much that they didn't show. Like, yeah, let's stop everything we did that they didn't show because I probably don't even remember it all. So we went to Casablanca's. Mm-hmm. So there was a, a bar that was called Casablanca's in Lodi, and I thought that was such a weird coincidence, and it had actual, or supposedly, actual Casablanca memorabilia in it. I'm shocked Kevin didn't include that, because it's such a Hef thing. Yeah, and I thought it was such a cool homage to Hef, which is exactly why I booked it. Mm-hmm. We went there, we had a quick drink, and um, and like looked at all the memorabilia. Even my grandma came. Yeah. Like It was kind of cute, and they didn't show it. We went to Wine and Roses, which is this beautiful, um, like, uh, hotel. It actually started out as, like, a bed and breakfast, uh, cute, like, farmhouse. And then it expanded to a whole hotel. They have, like, a, a go- it's a gorgeous wedding venue. They have a spa. They have, like, so much stuff now. Mm-hmm. And the Wine Grape Commission for Lodi is there, or the Wine Commission, whatever you call it. And they have, um, they gave us a tour while we were there. I think we used one of the rooms to change in. And, um, and then the, the wine commission gave us a tour through their wine museum and then took us out to the, uh, grapevines. They have like little, uh, fit, not fake ones, but just tiny little rows of them. And we tasted like the different, like Cabernet grape yeah. and that, like that different kind of stuff. We went to the hospital, which I know we already talked about, too. Um, We gave a donation because they wanted to build a new wing of the hospital, and we gave a donation for that. 
and we went to um, that Ooga Booga store. I mm. talked about that already. And then we stopped at Dave Wong's, my favorite place for dinner on the way out of town, which is in Stockton. And why does it sound so good? Every time you say Dave Wong's, I'm like, mmm. Yeah, it's delicious. And none of that was shown. So, like, I get it's only 22 minutes, but, like... Well, it's not in deleted scenes, either. Is I it? haven't... Well, I didn't watch all the deleted scenes. That's true. Yet. I haven't either, so I shouldn't speak too soon. We'll do an F on the deleted scenes. Yeah. So then it comes back to the mansion, and we're in the dining room for movie night. Or, or not we. Not Hef. us. <laughs> yeah. Hef is in the dining room for movie night, and he says, where are my girls? Yeah. And I have to say, like, as much as I look back on my time at the mansion, and I kind of, like, dread it, and I'm like, ugh, I wouldn't want to go back and relive everything. When I was watching this series, again, for YouTube... The few times I saw stuff at the mansion where I was like, well, that was kind of a nice day. I wouldn't mind going back and experience that day. It was always the buffet and movie times. Oh. Like, that was always kind of like a nice, chill moment for me where I kind of, like, enjoyed the company and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm surprised about is that we went to Lodi on a movie night. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't pick, like, a Thursday or something. We must have done it on a Sunday. Yeah, because he's showing a new movie because it was Grizzly Man. Yeah, I'm going to get into the whole Grizzly Man thing. But I, um, I'm i surprised that we did this on a Sunday. And I'm surprised everything that we wanted to do was open on a Sunday. Like the hospital was like yeah. doing things on a Sunday. The doctor well, that I used to work for. the hospital can't close on Sunday. Well, no, no, no. I don't mean the hospital closing. But I just mean like doing something. Have extra people. Well, like, I, I think like the, yeah, like the, the head of the hospital yeah. was there mm-hmm. to greet us and like people, the very much administrative people, like the yeah. heads of the hospital, except I know we were donating money. So maybe you get out of bed on the Sunday for that kind of thing. But like, I just feel like it's really weird that we did any of this on a Sunday. That is strange. And it's something we should ask because you guys, we have, we found an anonymous source. We found somebody who worked on the production end of Girls Next Door, and they want to remain anonymous, but we are going to get some answers. We're going to meet up with this person and get some answers, and we have permission to, like, share those answers with you guys, so. I'm so excited. I can't stand it. I know. I think on Instagram at some point, I'm going to ask you guys, if you could ask a Girls Next Door producer anything, what would you ask? From season one specific. Which, by the way, I need to set a date for that lunch. (laughs) I keep forgetting to do that. My schedule this month is just so wacky. Yeah, so I was just really shocked that, A, we did it on a Sunday, and B, that we were allowed to do it on a Sunday and miss a movie night. I would think Hef would be like, well, you have Monday through Thursday to go and do that. Why are you picking a Sunday? Yeah, or maybe it was like he just didn't want to be completely alone all day. Because, like, if we picked a Thursday, then he's just stuck scrapbooking all day. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like there was a reason we had to do it this day, and I don't know what it is. I mean, I know we're getting ready to go to New York. I know we just did. There's just a lot going on in this time period. Unless they kind of had the idea simultaneously along with me that, like, let's catch Hef hanging out with some other girls. So maybe they wanted, like, an event going on. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then um, Holly says, there's some scandalous girls at the mansion, and they'll do anything to try and get Hef's attention. By the way, this was the first buffet dinner I had missed in the entire four years. Like, even if I'd had a surgery or was really sick, I was always right down there, whether I had a bandage on my nose or not. You know? Like, this was the first buffet I had missed in four years. That's crazy. And when I say scandalous girls... I don't mean poor Stacy and Fiona. Oh, I know. They just focus in on whoever's there. And it was our good friend Stacy Burke, who we're going to talk to later and find out if she was offended by this. And then Fiona, who's this woman from Australia who is a witch, and she posed for Playboy. And both really nice people. Yeah. And not people that I would refer to. And when I say scandalous girls, I mean people who like... I mean, I guess it's not that scandalous to think, you know, because Hef has multiple girlfriends that you could cut in on that. But, like, people who are just going to jump in and, like, don't give a fuck right. about anybody else there. And it would happen. And did you ever hear the story of the couch jumper? No. I, and, I don't know. When I thought of scandalous girls, this is what I'm thinking of. It was a story that Dickie Ban used to always tell. Which, by the way, we dropped Dickie Ban's name so much in this. People are probably like, who the fuck? But um, Dickie Ban used to tell this story about how when Hef was dating the Bentley twins, the twins were gone for something on a movie night. And he said there was this other woman there who was testing for Playmate and would later go on to become one of Hef's seven girlfriends after the twins left. 
And he said, so Hef sits down and the moment this girl sees that the twins aren't there, because she was seated on the row behind the couch on the folding chairs, he goes, she jumped the couch. And he said it like it was the most scandalous thing ever that this girl jumped the couch. So anytime I think of this girl, I always think of her as like the couch jumper. But like she saw her chance to move in and she did. And she was successful in her goals. So. Well, those are the kind of scandalous girls we're talking about. Not Stacy and Fiona. Yeah, exactly. And poor Fiona, because you say, well, Stacy, I was at least saw again and was able to talk to, but Fiona, you never saw again. So you're just like, what? Is I know. I hope she wasn't offended. I don't think so, because I had Fiona. Cause you, like you mentioned, she's a witch, and I had her on my Ghost Magnet podcast, uh -huh. and she was totally cool and nice. And I, I, it was before I started watching these uh -huh. back, so I didn't even think of it. I didn't even know she was one of the girls they showed. Yeah, I didn't remember. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I knew at one time, but I didn't remember. So I didn't even think. To mention it to her and we just went on as business as normal like without even mentioning it and then they show this shot of Stacy sitting by herself at the table or she's probably not by herself it's probably just like the shot is cropped in like that and she's zoning out yeah but I think they want it to look like she's scheming like they want it to look like she's thinking okay how do I make my move now that the girls are gone how do I get back in there a thousand percent <laughs> they a totally thousand percent like that. that's what they're trying to make it look like and um, I like how Hef accuses Ray Anthony of wanting to cozy up. That is so funny. <laughs> but you say in there too that you're afraid to be gone for even one minute because somebody might slip in. But imagine, you guys, I know we kind of joke about it and, and mm -hmm. Holly plays into it and stuff. But like seriously, imagine having to worry about that every time you're gone. That's really stressful. Yeah. And it's like emotionally abusive. Like feeling like you can't be away from your boyfriend for like a minute or you're going to be replaced. Like that's not okay. <laughs> right. And then, um, so it cuts back to the limo. We did another clothing change somehow. Yes. <laughs> uh, you call Hef, and as you call, you're calling Hef, the camera pans to Stacey. And this is where she's looking all calculated uh -huh. and stuff. Like, she's really, and it shows the, is this the phone room, by the way, that Hef yes, is in? Yes, we finally get to see the phone room. So we talked about the phone room before, because that's where I found a crack pipe. Yeah. But this is where you see the phone room, when you see Hef sitting down on the phone. But you know why I was confused by it, and I had to ask you if that was the phone room? Because I did not remember that the phone room had another door in there to go to the outside. Yeah. I did not remember that. And it also, in the shot, it looks kind of bigger than it is. He does what I was thinking. It was the size of, like, two phone booths, probably. It was tiny, but in that shot, it looks huge. Yeah. Well, I mean, not huge, but huge, but big like for a phone room. like ish Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I was confused because I didn't remember that there was a door to the outside in that room. And I didn't remember it being that big. So I was like, wait, this is the phone room. But is it? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I have to ask Holly because... I knew it was, but I was also very confused by it. Speaking of the phone room, I wanted to ask you, did they ever install an elevator in the mansion? They did, yeah. Because when I was there and kind of, you know, picturing myself as like staying there, I knew that one day there would be a day where Hef would be able to come down the stairs, but that it would still be very important to him to like see his friends and socialize all the time. So I always kind of had it in the back of my mind, like, where are we going to put the elevator? Well, there was already a shaft built in the house. Well, the elevator used to be where the vanity is, so I didn't that's, want to put it there. <laughs> well, that's where it, that's where it that was my only space. But it used to be, like, underneath the vanity was the bathroom that went off of the library, and that used to be the elevator. And back then it was referred to as, like, the luggage elevator, because that's where they'd put all their trunks and shit when they got home. <laughs> yeah. Um, but well, where did they put the elevator? And they put it in there before Hep died? I believe, so I don't know 100% on all of this, but I heard that it was underway, but it didn't get finished in his lifetime, but the new uh -huh. owner has finished it, and it does go up into the closet, so it's somewhere right in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, we get a quick shot of Ruth. She was one of the butlers, but I haven't seen her in so long. I know, it's another one of those moments where you see people from the staff, and you're like, oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> and then Hef says, it's grizzly bear time, roar! And when I was watching this, I was like, what is he talking no, about? No, the first time I rewatched this, I was like, what the fuck? And I think I said that on my YouTube reaction, and somebody in the comments was like, it's because you guys show Grizzly Man. You talk about it in the commentary. And Grizzly Man was this documentary that came out back then about a man 
in Alaska who got eaten by a grizzly bear, but there was something weird. And then they found like his watch in the bear's stomach. And I was so excited to see this movie because obviously Alaska and I love documentaries. And I was so bummed that this was the movie we were missing. So yeah. I know you and I went to go see the movie like separately on a different day. Yeah, we went ahead of time before Hef watched it because we we're like, we can't miss this one. But you guys, if you don't know Grizzly Man, the, the attack was caught on his camera. Yeah, that's the extra creepy part of it. Yeah. Ugh. So, yeah. And then it but it's just funny out of context because nobody ever says they're showing Grizzly Man in this episode. So you just see Hef go, "It's Grizzly Bear time." Rawr, as he walks into the dining room. And I think they want that to seem like it's kind of like a sexual thing or like he's the Grizzly Bear looking for a woman. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ew. So when I watched this back totally forgetting that we wa- that they watched Grizzly Man that night, I was like, "Ew, what the heck does this mean?" Yeah. What is he doing? Why is he acting like that? <laughs> and then when I watched it with commentary, I was like, oh, Grizzly Man, it all makes sense now. How the fuck did we fit like a six hour drive, that whole day's worth of stuff, stuff they didn't even show, and a six hour drive back into one day? By leaving at five in the morning and getting home at two in the morning. Jesus. And it shows us getting home at one in the morning, but I know that that's not true because I remember looking at the clock and and, and seeing that it was like two in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying it in commentary yeah. that, wait, they're showing the clock that says a little after one, but it was really after two. Yeah. So they're just showing footage to make it look late, but it wasn't even as late as it really was. Like that was so much to do in one day. Mm-hmm. And then we're calling back at the mansion. And this is a gag that happens again when we're in Jamaica in season four. Oh, I just wanted to say, did you see that? <laughs> Sorry. No, did you see that um, his sons came to that movie night? I did, which was really rare. Because unless it was Harry Potter, they weren't really coming to the movies. Yeah. Um, and then they show Stacy plopping down on the couch. Yeah, but Stacy is staying as far away from Hef as possible. And I, I want to ask her when we talked to her, was that on purpose? Like, did you feel self-conscious or was that just where you're used to sitting? Yeah, so just so you guys know too, it wasn't unusual for Stacy to sit on that couch. Like, she'd always sit on the couch with us, except for when the mean girls were there. She would try and sit on the couch, but they would boot her out and then she'd have to go sit on the floor. But when it was just us, she'd always come and sit on the couch with us and she always sat at the very end. So it was kind of her spot to sit at the yeah. very end. So on one hand, it wasn't that, first of all, it wasn't weird that she was sitting on the couch. And it really wasn't weird that she was sitting all the way at the other end. But, but it I'm looks curious. weird. It looks weird. And she really didn't have to. Like, she could have spread out a little bit. Like, I get it if she doesn't want to go snuggle up to Hef, but she could have spread out a little bit. Or... Well, honestly, it's more comfortable when you have the armrest That's and true. stuff. So I would probably, if you were at one end, I'd probably get on the other end, too, just so yeah. I had my own armrest and could really, like, hunker in. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Um, you can see Dickie Bam on the pillows in front of the couch. Which, if anybody tried to steal that spot, uh, uh, uh. Mm, 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 mm. And uh, they just are kind of cutting back and forth with, like, what's going on at the mansion and us talking in the limo about, you know, all of the insecurities that you have about girls mm. coming, missing the movie night, not being at the mansion, being away from his side. And then they keep cutting to, like, different little clips at the mansion. Just keeps kind of going back and forth. And it's funny when they show the couch and Stacy really far away. She says something like, oh, I miss the girls. It feels empty or something like that. And Hef goes, I should have brought some dolls down. Yes. As if he has like a closet of sex dolls. Which, by the way, he didn't have. That I knew of. Right. <laughs> but he did have a whole couch full of stuffed animals. He could have uh, That's filled true. it up for but sure. But it's funny when he says, I should have brought some dolls down. You know, people are probably thinking, okay, so he must have like a stockpile of like blow up dolls and sex dolls. And totally. Totally. <laughs> Um, but I feel like they're totally showing how close is, is Stacy going to scooch in. Like exactly. the cameras are trying to catch that. And we're in the limo kind of joking about that kind of stuff. And then it cuts to commentary and Ken, or not, oh no, yeah, in commentary, Kendra says she likes the drama. And in, and you say, um, not when the drama involves you and, and you bring up the gift bag stealing. Oh yeah. Well, that's a whole thing because we're in the limo and we're, playing off the scene of like being worried about who's going to try to sit next to Hef. And then we're trying to call the mansion. And this gag happens again in season four in Jamaica where we can't get through. Like the reception is just bad, but they try to play it off. Like the butlers are hanging up on us on purpose. Like as if they're trying to hide Hef's infidelity or something, which they do again when we do the Jamaica episode and we're just laughing and having a good time about it. And then it cuts to Kendra and I'm saying, um, oh, I wonder who's sitting next to Hef, and 
Kendra goes, Stacy. And I go, but I wonder if she's sitting like this. And I put my leg over Kendra, just like trying to be funny. And, and then it cuts to Kendra in her interview saying, I think that'd be kind of funny if she did that. Cause I want to see shit go down. And it reminds me of in the last episode, we talked about this earlier in the episode when they cut to Kendra's interview and she says, you know, when I thought about going to Lodi, I thought it was so boring and you were like, mildly offended by that but I'm like well I don't know it could have been like her saying well when I first thought we we're going to Lodi it was boring and they just cut out her saying but then it was fun that was mm -hmm. just kind of how I took it and I don't know how to take this either with her saying I think it would have been funny if Stacy did that because I want to see shit go down like maybe it was just something she was kind of coaxed to say maybe it was just really light-hearted but I was vaguely offended by it at the time because yeah. I'm so like wounded and defensive about all the years of drama that I had to go through it was just such a like close to my heart thing right and I just didn't think it was funny for somebody else to sit there and be like oh yeah I want to see you get pissed off and I want to see you hurting and I want to see like that drama put on display like I didn't think that was funny and then she's like in the commentary she's like oh, I like drama and I'm like not when it's you mm -hmm. and I bring up the gift thing meaning Audra like if Hef would have brought Audra back or if we were gone on a trip and she thought Audra was there trying to do something she would have been flipping out yeah and we always had her back with the Audra thing which I don't know if we should have right so that's how I feel about that. Well, I don't <laughs> think it was funny, and I think it's insensitive. And she does know what we went through all the time which before she was even there. Yeah, because so, she was told. Like, I don't know if she really understood. Like, I think if she could have truly understood and felt what we had gone through, there wouldn't have been so much tension. I think she would have had a little more respect for the situation. Agreed. But, yeah. Yeah, and then she talks about how she wished that she could have, um, that, that Audra would have come back so she could have socked her. And she said, I've never had a chance to see her and Which, cause drama. That bitch. That's what she says in yeah. the commentary. But according to Audra's interview, they did see each other at a party. Yeah, after and Audra it. tried to apologize and replace the gift bag. And according to Kendra's book, which is not the most reliable thing in my opinion she says she ran into audra in the gym and wanted to kick her ass or something like that so it's just like nothing is making sense so that comment that she makes in commentary isn't true according to her own book or audra's statement yeah That's so it's all a jumbled mess and i like how stacy looks at the big gap between us and she says they're not here they're stuck in lodi because <laughs> if you guys don't know there's a uh, famous credence clearwater song Oh, yeah. Called Stuck in Lodi. That is so funny. I didn't even think about that. And as we're calling the mansion, it reminds me of, like, how the butlers would always get prank calls, which I may or may not have mentioned that on this podcast before. But, you guys, these poor butlers, because somehow people would get the Playboy Mansion number. And these poor butlers had to deal with all these prank calls all the time. And there was one in particular, I remember, there was this grown woman who would call all the time and say she was Hef's daughter. Spoiler alert, I don't think she really was. But she would call and say she was Hef's daughter, and the butlers would just put her on speakerphone and let her talk. And I remember one of us saw that at some point, and we're like, why do you guys do that? And they're like, because if we don't just put her on speaker and let her talk, she'll just keep calling back. Yeah. It was like an epidemic. Well, and you know what? It, it got way worse after the show started. Then they started calling, all these prank calls started calling for us. And they had the whiteboard mm -hmm. down there. And I have a picture of it. Unfortunately, it turned out blurry, but I can have my mom take uh -huh. it again. I have a picture of the whiteboard, and it says prank calls. And it has each of our names. And they start tallying how many we're each getting per day. I never knew about that. That's so funny. It's hilarious. It sucks for them, but... <laughs> Oh, my God. And then I remember asking you in the limo, too, are there any random girls staying at the mansion? Because like you were saying, the couch jumper story, those were the girls we had to worry about. Not the ones that knew us, because they knew us. And yeah. we were all friends. And we all had each other's back, even if they weren't girlfriends. Yeah. They were their playmates and friends of ours, or like Stacy and like Crystal and people like that. But it was the people who were coming there to try and like get shit that you had yeah. to worry about. Yeah, like if there was somebody new there that we hadn't had a chance to meet. and Because mm -hmm. I feel like even with all the Playmate testers that I would give tours to and stuff, like immediately like there was a rapport and they kind of like respected the fact that we were half girlfriends and that wasn't really their ultimate goal anyway. So things were good, but yeah, we were like, well, what if there's somebody up there we don't know? Exactly. So then, yeah, yeah, like you were saying, you call and you get hung up on. And then Kendra calls and she gets hung up on. And um, she 
in commentary, she says her cell phone doesn't make that weird noise because they put in like 80s cell phone. So she, wait, no, wait, like, let me take that back. It's funny because in commentary, she she's all outraged by it and stuff. And then she goes, my phone doesn't make those noises. And then she goes, that sounds like 80s cell phone noises. And I'm thinking, there were no cell phones in the 80s. Yeah, unless those weird brick things. And I don't know what those sounded like. I don't either. Was it it dial did she... What are the noises? Was it like a dial? It was noise? like robot computer noises. Oh, like very... Beep, beep, boop, boop, or yeah. Something. <laughs> like very old school. Like I think older than the 80s. Like 60s. Like it's very like, Kevin Burns. Like sci-fi computer 60s. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like the noises he made with the ghost equipment. But I just episode. think it's... I think it's funny that Kendra says 80 cell phone because... What did that sound like? You know what? I put in my notes here, and I don't know if this refers to, like, action footage or, like, an interview, but I put E.T. Nick and trans rumor. So my neck, like, it's very, not very smooth. I don't have a lot of fat on my neck. You can see, like, my, I don't know what we call it, like, a, my larynx or whatever, voice box, everything. And sometimes in one of the interviews, I feel like my neck looks like an ET neck. So you can see like necklines. And sometimes if my, I don't know, my neck looks weird. I'm self-conscious of it. But anyway, one of my favorite rumors I've seen about myself online is that I'm secretly trans and people know this because I have an Adam's apple. Oh my <laughs> Which God. Which is not an Adam's apple. This is just my fucking neck. And it's just, and the reason that's funny to me is if I were trans you guys would know like I never missed the chance to talk about a journey and also like you've seen me naked down to my vag and from what I understand and maybe I'm wrong maybe this is the way people are doing it now but I feel like when somebody is transitioning from male to female one of the first surgeries they have is like to shave down the Adam's apple right I don't know I have no idea but but anyway like you think but everybody's seen me completely nude on this show. So you would yeah. think I had all that done and neglected the Adam's apple? <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Well, you want to know what's funny about this? Is that I made a note in here that Holly's ponytail looks super cute in this interview. And then next thing I know, I'm listening to commentary. And Holly says, I hate the way I look in that interview. I got E.T. neck. <laughs> E.T. neck, yeah. Because there was just something about it where, like, my horizontal, like, necklines in my skin were, like, aligning with, like, my voice box. And it's just, like, it, I look like E.T. for some reason. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so then we have a six-hour drive home, and we had almost a 24-hour day, like, nonstop. Yeah, we fit a lot in. And Hef waited up for us, but yeah. he looked like he just woke up. His hair was all disarrayed. He looked like he had sleep lines all over his yeah, face. Yeah, totally. And I was thinking, you know what, people are going to be like, well, they didn't have to come home for curfew, but I just want to, like, point out that's only because we had cameras and mm -hmm. security with us, and Hef knew exactly where we were 24-7. And that was the first time we were allowed out past curfew, and it was only for the show. Yeah. And it wouldn't be until season four, I think, or season three, when we're allowed to actually stay the night somewhere with the cameras. Oh, really? Is it that much further down? Well, it's the Aspen episode, or not Aspen, but the Sean White episode. That's okay. The snowboarding episode is the first one where at least I'm allowed to stay overnight somewhere. Okay. Oh, that's Vail when we went. Like... Yeah, Vail. Because it was the first time where we absolutely couldn't fit our activity into like a 24-hour period. And I think just at that point in the relationship, like, Hef valued us a little bit more because of the show, not because of anything less than superficial. And, you know, just felt like secure enough to kind of like let me go for a night. Yeah. And then in my interview, I say something after we come home or as we're getting close to coming home where I say something like, I know he's not going to dump me because some girl comes up to him. And I'm just thinking like how sad and disgusting and bare minimum that is that I have to say that in his defense or like in defense of our relationship. Like, well, I know he's not going to dump me because some girl comes up to him. Yeah, because he fucking would just add somebody to the roster. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. That's true. I love how um, we go upstairs and Lily, we open up the door to your vanity and little Winnie comes running out. She's so excited to see me. She goes bolting down the hall to our room. It's so cute. So, so cute. But before we get there, did you hear they were playing like weird R&B music in the car ride home that they like never use again? No. It's random. I didn't notice it. <laughs> so is this the first time you broke curfew? And when I say broke curfew, it's because we're with the show and everything. So it's like, okay. 
But was this the first time? Well, I'd gone home. Yeah, to see family. And to stuff. see family and stuff. So technically, no. I mean. And the Black Angus episode. Well, the Black Angus. Yeah, that <laughs> the Black whole, Angus incident. Yeah, the Black Angus gate. <laughs> I think this is the first time I broke curfew at all for anything other than the time I was five minutes late coming home from a photo shoot. Like, I hadn't even gone home to visit family or anything. It's nuts. I got in trouble one other time. Uh, I went, remember when Ma- Martha Stewart was doing The Apprentice? Mm-hmm. And I went to San Diego to do that audition. Yeah. And it took me forever to get home. And it was a movie night. I didn't miss curfew, uh-huh. but I missed dinner mm-hmm. and a movie. And Hef was on the phone to me like, where the fuck are you? Jesus Christ. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way. But I was like just stuck in like wall-to-wall traffic coming home from San Diego. And I think it was like a Sunday or something. No, it couldn't have been a Sunday. It must have been a Friday. Yeah, the control issues from that guy are insane. And I was like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I wasn't, I didn't break curfew. I just wasn't there for dinner and a movie. Yeah, but can you imagine being somebody like him with such a full life, whether it's like work, social schedule, multiple girlfriends, and you're nitpicking because one of your girlfriends isn't back for a dinner, so you're calling, freaking out? Yeah. She, like, go to therapy. <laughs> I mean, it's too late for that, but it's so cute because Winnie had a sleepover in my room. I know. I was going to mention that. that because a lot of people ask, well, who takes care of your dogs when you guys are gone? And obviously, we weren't gone. We were gone for, like, just under 24 hours. But what would happen if we were going to be gone for relatively short periods of time like that is I would put Winnie in your room with all of your dogs uh-huh. and then they would play and sleep and do whatever in your room and then the butlers would feed them and butlers would come in and take them all outside at the same time yeah and they all loved each other so much they would play like crazy the butlers would bring them down into the great hall and play with everybody so and then put them back up in the room when it was time for like bedtime for the dogs kind yeah, of thing it was so cute it was really cute And um, I also wanted to comment on here how the show, and I think we've mentioned this before, but this is a prime example of it, that no matter where we went with the show, they always wanted to end it like back home at the mansion. That is true. I think Kevin even told you that specifically, right? Yeah. And I just think it was like, there was something like very final about it. Like we were back at the mansion and they show the outside of the mansion. They show like the final light going out. It's very 80s sitcom. Mm Mm-hmm. I wonder what the first episode was where we don't end at the mansion. It must be the next one, New York, which is is. coming up. Because we go straight from New York to Chicago. And it's interesting because in the commentary... You know, we're, the credits are running and me, you, and Kendra are still talking and we're doing this commentary all in one day. And I say in the commentary, the next episode is New York. That's the bomb. The bomb meaning good, if you guys don't remember early 2000s <laughs> slash 90s lingo. But I'm like, why the fuck did I say that? New York is like the worst episode. It's my least favorite episode of the season by far. And I don't even think I liked it then. So why did I say it was the bomb? Was it just because I was so thrilled to finally get a chance to travel to the East Coast or something? I think I think New York's a very mixed bag. I think we did a lot of fun things. Uh-huh. But then there was also really shitty things happening. So Yeah, we're going to be covering New York next week. And I can't wait to get into it because I despise that episode for so many reasons yeah so it's funny because i say that they try and end every episode at home but but that next episode is the first one because i already Mm -hmm. watched it and it's the first one where we aren't home yeah um do you think it's interesting that hef didn't come with us to lodi Yes and no. I mean, first of all, we would have had to travel in a different way because there's no way Hef is doing a cramped limo ride for six hours. No, we would have had to either have done a motorhome Mm -hmm. or just flown in. Yeah, I don't even know if he would have had the patience with a motorhome for six hours. Like, I think that sounds hella fun. Yeah. But I don't think he would have had the patience. But I know why you're asking. Yeah. Because he goes to Kendra's. Right. And I have mixed feelings about that too like I don't know if he went because he's favoring Kendra and favoring Kendra's mom or because he already had like a protocol when it came to traveling to San Diego because he'd gone to San Diego a couple times within the past couple years to go to SeaWorld and when he went to San Diego he would take this he'd rent out like this private train caboose called Mm -hmm. like the Scottish Thistle and it would take you from LA to San Diego it was a fun little trip and he had it all stocked with food and stuff 
So he was able, he already had a protocol to travel that way. And also Kendra's hometown visit takes place in season two. And as the seasons went on, he fell more and more in love with the show. Yeah. Which makes me think how heartbreaking must it have been when the show got canceled for him eventually. Yeah. So season two, he's even more into doing stuff and more into like, I want to be in every episode kind of a thing. So I have mixed feelings about it. It might have been a combination of both. Yeah, I think so too. But he doesn't go to my hometown and he doesn't go to your hometown. Yeah. But he absolutely goes to Kendra's hometown. Yeah. And also like with my hometown, I remember when I pitched it as an episode you know, we would have these meetings with Kevin, the three of us in the dining room. Kevin would write down the ideas. He'd type up the ideas, give them to Hef. And I saw the notes Hef made on the notes Kevin had given him. And one of the ideas was going to Holly's hometown in Alaska. And Hef wrote, of all my years traveling the world, there's one place I've never wanted to go. And that's Alaska. And Kevin brought that back up to me and I go, he wasn't invited. And Kevin just roared laughing with this biggest belly laugh. But of course, Hep wasn't invited. Like I knew he wouldn't go to Alaska. And the only reason I thought it was even feasible is because by the time we go to Alaska in season four, we'd already done some overnights. Like we did the Veil episode with Sean White and maybe one or two other things. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he definitely didn't go to my hometown. Like he wouldn't have hacked it though. He is, cause there's nothing luxury about Alaska <laughs> on right. any level. So he definitely wouldn't have hacked it. Other interesting feedback I get, and I've got this over the years, not from a ton of people, but people are like pissy at me for going to Alaska and not Oregon. Oh, I've seen comments about that too. And I don't under, I feel like it's obvious why I went to Alaska. I mean, and if it's not, I'll explain. First of all, Alaska is like a whole different world, so it's a much more interesting episode. In my mind, like I know Oregon's beautiful and there's a lot to love and appreciate, and it's quirky as f which I love, but it's not, I, I also think of Oregon as a little bit generic, no offense, and Alaska's not. Like it's right. definitely a more interesting episode. And for me also, I feel like I lived in Alaska for my childhood childhood, like the up until I was 10, and I feel like it really, um, shaped me and molded who I am and by the time I was in Oregon I feel like I just kind of felt like oh this isn't the place for me and just was like counting the days until I could move but there's another reason I didn't want to go to Oregon too and that's because people I knew you know from high school still lived there and I knew if I went there I'd get called out like what the fuck are you doing this isn't you and I wasn't ready for that oh you know what I mean yeah so yeah. there's a bunch of reasons. I mean, that wasn't the main reason, and I wasn't even, like, consciously aware of that reason at the time. But thinking back, I know that that was a thing mm -hmm. um, lurking somewhere in my subconscious mind. But the main reason is I just thought Alaska was a more interesting episode, and it certainly was. And I just wanted to, you know, show where I grew up to people because it was so, you know, borderline kind of off the grid and stuff. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, even, like, Zach and I like to flip through the channels and watch, like, the survival shows and like the Alaska shows and the off the grid shows and it so reminds me of growing up like they even show Craig Alaska which was like the town I lived in I didn't live in Craig the whole time I was in Alaska but that was like the biggest town I lived in yeah and you see Craig a lot on those shows and I love I love seeing it that's so funny it's funny you bring up high school and stuff too because do you remember so like when I was in high school like I never really got along with that many people uh -huh. and I transferred high schools halfway through and then I still just didn't jive with high school and I ended up graduating early and doing the last um six months in a junior college mm -hmm. and then just coming back to walk the graduation so I didn't really have like a core group of friends I didn't really feel uh involved in high school or like liked you know and I remember one day while I was at the mansion I got a postcard saying it was my high school reunion uh -huh. and they hand wrote on it we would love for you to bring Hef and the girls and I thought oh my god these people didn't even like me yeah and now they want me to come with a handwritten note please bring Hef and the girls I don't think so oh my god that's crazy can you imagine Hef going to somebody's high school reunion no but in my head I was thinking it would be a funny show it would be a funny episode I, I was gonna it just popped into my head it would have been a funny episode to do Hef's high school reunion but then I thought they're probably all dead <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of do when we go to Chicago. We That's do go to his high school, but it would have been cool if there were like some survivors and you could do like a half high school reunion. That would be yeah. cute for the show, I it, think. It would have been for I sure. I mean, his girl he had a crush on in high school was still alive. Like she came to the mansion and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's interesting. Just this is the first of all like the hometown visit episodes. Yeah. I was always a little salty because I didn't get a hometown episode or a birthday until like way later. But it's just easier because we were never shooting around Christmas. That's why I didn't get birthday until season three. Yeah. And also, um, you know, you guys are both from California and I'm very much not. Right. So it was just more of a fiasco. But I feel like, and that was not, you know, anybody trying to not give me those plot lines. Like, there were reasons for it. But I feel like that's another reason why I'm so, like, distant on this show. And you feel like, I mean, I'm holding back a lot to you for a lot of reasons. But it's why I'm kind of, like, I don't know, the furthest back character, I think. (laughs) Yeah. It's just my stuff wasn't as easy to do ever for whatever reason. Right. It would have been fun to go to Oregon, though, too, and I still want to do that with you because I was, and I say this, I was accidentally born in Oregon. Yeah. (laughs) Because just so that makes sense to people, both of my parents uh, have been, lived in Lodi, like, their whole lives almost, and, um, and went to Lodi High, everything, and I was conceived in Lodi, but then my uh-huh. brother, uh, my brother, my dad got stationed in the Air Force in Oregon. So they moved to Oregon and my mom had me there. And then like within a few weeks, we moved back to California. So I just was like kind of accidentally born there. And, but I've never really been there. Obviously I was born there, but I've never been to Oregon. Well, that was another idea we wanted to do. When I say we did Alaska for my hometown visit and not Oregon, it's not that I was opposed to ever going to Oregon. But what I wanted to do was I was born in Astoria. And then when I was really little, we moved to Alaska for like 10 years. And then I moved back to Oregon in a different place. But what I wanted to do was for us to go to Astoria and do like a Goonies tour or something. And do like little places. Like my mom used to take me when I was a super little baby and stuff. And then um, Kevin said, yeah, I'd only do that if Corey Feldman would go with you guys. Which I think would have been fun. <laughs> yeah. Because he's quirky. Yeah. I think that would have been totally fun. And I was down for that. And I, I wish that I always wanted that to happen. And then I also wanted to stop in Tillamook when we were there because mm-hmm. that's where I was born. And they have like the cheese and ice cream factory yeah. there. And it's near the coast, I've heard. And I just heard it's really cute and pretty. Stink, it smells. Stink. Yeah. The yeah. Thing is we used to play Tillamook for high school football when I was a cheerleader. And that's the thing is you smell like fertilizer from a mile away when you get close to Tillamook. But where I went to high school in St. Helens, that that's, I no one to talk either because St. Helens had a paper mill in it. Oh, So you stink. could smell St. Helens too when you got there. So. Yeah. Well, and Lodi is very much agriculture too. So it's yeah. not like it smells pretty. When those, when those grapes are like rotting on the vine and they're oh, like sitting in weird. piles and stuff, they have a very fermented, stinky smell. And then out by the highways where the big dairies are and stuff, mm-hmm. it absolutely smells like cows. Yeah. So you know, I, I used to joke, but you know when you're getting close to Lodi when it stinks like cows cows yeah that's so funny <laughs> okay so here we are at your favorite part of the episode best and worst do you I want me know. to go first do you want to start with worse <laughs> yeah let's start with worse so the worst is doing stacy dirty i feel bad and who knows maybe she doesn't even care but i feel like i mean as long as she's a good sport about it it's cool but we're gonna interview her and find out that'll be on the patreon Also, I don't love when Kendra says she likes the drama because I feel like, thanks. Right. What's your worst? Oh, okay. (laughs) I I don't know why I was waiting for more. Um, Okay, so my worst is um, I think just the stress that I felt. They didn't even show it on the Uh show, but my worst was the stress that I felt of going to Ooga Booga, which was uh, my ex's store. Yeah. Because it just put so much stress and tension on me, and I really, really, really felt uncomfortable about it. And I just felt like it was really walking a line that I didn't want to be walking. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it just made me feel way too uncomfortable. Um, yeah, that's a hard line to walk. Yeah, and I, even now I cringe. Like, I was like, that they, none of that made it in the episode, right? And then I was like, yeah. second-guessing, because I still remember doing it in mm-hmm. my head, and I remember how I felt, but I did, couldn't remember if it was actually in the show or not. So it was really stressful for me. I also uh, think one of the one of the other main negatives is uh, the way the Great Festival treated me. Oh yeah, that was all off camera too. But in our last episode, we read off a news article where they were not that nice. Yeah, I was trying. To, my original whole thing was to get the girls to come to the Great Festival, which is a big celebration in Lodi every year. And uh, they were not only not welcoming, but had some kind of unkind things to say. Yeah. Um, 
And then Stacy as well. Yeah. Because she was done dirty, and that's exactly not who we meant. You yeah, know? totally. And they made, and she took the brunt of it. And I don't think she really minds. We'll find out. Yeah. But just the fact that we knew it wasn't her, she knew it wasn't her. Like, yeah. How, what, the, what about the rest of the world who's thinking, oh, those scandalous girls? Yeah, like, I don't really think anybody thought this, because at least I haven't got the feedback, but I would feel really bad if the audience was like, ew, Stacey's a fucking bitch. Why is she doing that? Because that's not how she is. So I would feel really bad. Yeah, but we know how the show can mold people in the way. I mean, I still yeah. get haters about episode two. Yeah. I know most of you say you didn't see it that way, and most of you were so sweet about it but I still get haters yeah, saying that totally. I was getting girls drunk and sabotaging their pictorials and stuff I still to this day get those messages yeah. so I can't I can only imagine like how Stacy and Fiona felt and some of the hate they might have gotten at that time I don't know if they still do but if they do I mean yeah I think that was really bad and I think it was bad for them to do them so dirty like that yeah Best is just seeing your hometown because I'd always wanted to go because I would hear you talk about it when um, you would go home to visit your family. And I just thought I would never be able to because Hef never let me go anywhere. Yeah. So it was just, I think my favorite thing about this episode isn't necessarily anything that's in the episode, but it was just like the real life experience was super fun for me. So my best is sort of similar. I mean, I love that we got to go to Lodi. Like never in a million Uh years would I've ever thought I would get to take you and Kendra to Lodi. Yeah. I mean, just not in a million years. And to ever be there with Cam cruise and yeah. having just posed for Playboy and like having my own TV show never in a million years yeah. did I even dream such a thing would be happening so that was just like wow moment and then just getting to share my grandma's house and mm-hmm. my like real true family and seeing their turnout and their support yeah. and all the love that everyone had and um, and obviously there were haters around town or whatever, but not within my family and everyone, mm-hmm. or at least not within the family that showed up, yeah. but, but there were still some that were like, mm. but, um, but it was just amazing. And the opportunity to go grape stomping, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to do that and it just never happened. It's so cute and camp and I love Lucy. Yeah. And I loved it. And to be able to do that with you guys and to have it all documented as like a, the most amazing home video now too is incredible. So I think there's just a lot of good memories and just the opportunity to be able to share it with everyone was something more than I ever thought would ever happen. Yeah, so overall we kind of love this episode. Yeah, I thought it was fun. it's a positive. Next week though, you guys, next week, mm-hmm. you're going to hear me bitching about some shit. Absolutely. <laughs> next week we're going to New York and meeting with the ladies of The View. Dun, dun, dun. So we will see you then. If you want more content, if you want to hear our interview with Stacy and Bridget's mom, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we'll see you guys next week.